Hey guys, welcome to the Commander Lounge. I know it's been a very, very long time. I'm sorry. I've been very busy with life stuff. Uh, it happens. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I got a new uh, Commander deck tech for you guys today. Uh, as you guys can see, uh, out of the Commander pre-cons of 2017, I ended up deciding to pick up um, the Kitty Cat, the, what is it called? Feline Ferocity, I think it's called. I picked that one up. And I mainly picked it up only because of this general. Uh, so yeah, let's just get in the into the stats. Uh, his name is Nizan Revered Bladesmith. He is 6 mana, uh, Selesnia uh, colors and 4 colorless, for a 5-4 cat artificer. Uh, when Nizan Revered Bladesmith enters the battlefield, search your library for an equipment card and reveal it. If you reveal a card named Hammer of Nizan this way, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, put that card into your hand and shuffle your library. Uh, and then it also has, whenever an equipped creature you control attacks, you may tap target creature defending player controls. Um, I know you guys know I'm not too big a fan of tutors in the game, uh, but I really like this card. I really like tutoring. For, I've always liked tutoring for equipment because there's nothing... I mean, there, there are some crazy equipments out there, but there's I don't feel like there's anything like too, too, too broken you can tutor up for on a dime. I mean, there's a lot of cool toolbox things you can do. And, you know, I was, I was really interested in this card. Uh, and, and you know what the main reason why I want to play? Not just because it, 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 it tutors, but because a lot of times you're going to be tutoring for this card first, the one that they're talking about that you can just throw onto the battlefield. And that's Hammer of Nizan. Uh, this card is absolutely absurd. It's four mana for an equipment. Whenever Hammer of Nizan or another equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach the equipment to target creature you control. That's anybody. And it says equip creature gets 2-0 and has indestructibility. So basically Nizan, you pay six mana to throw him out. And that's the first thing you're going to want is Hammer of Nizan. You throw it right on him because after that, it's like the one half of Sigarda's aid or any other equipment you cast is going to go in and go straight on to something. Uh, go straight onto a creature, whichever one you want. Uh, so it's just it's just absurdly good. You pay six mana, and essentially, and also without all that, pay six mana for a uh, what is it seven four indestructible? Like that seems that's a good rate for six mana. You know, it's a good start with uh, Voltron. Uh, so yeah, that, that, if you guys haven't noticed, this is an equipment Voltron commander deck. So yeah, let's get into the rest of the deck. So Hammer of Nizan's absurd. It's really good. All right, so now we get into utility lands, uh, and you know what? There's a good amount of cards in here that I kept from the precon. Obviously, strip mine's not one of them, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll point them out as we go. Uh, so these are my utility lands. Strip mine's always important. Get rid of problem lands like guys cradle, you know, guys cradle and cabal call for all. Oh, you know, you guys know problem lands. All right, tectonic edge does the same thing. Buried Roan absolutely needs to. This should have been in the precon because this card is absurdly good. Especially in this deck, being able to get back equipments on a dime. Next is Rogue's Passage. Pay for, make creature unblockable. Uh, I usually run these in like most of my decks, but um, it's really important in a Voltron deck to probably have one of these Rogue Passages. Uh, Temple of the False God, just ramp. And we're already doing rampies. Might as well ramp on top of our ramp with land that, lands that ramp. Uh, V2 Ghazi, the City Tree. I wasn't too sure which land... To put in near the end, it was either this one or the tap two creatures make an 8-8. But sometimes that's hard in this deck because I really rely on only one creature at a time to do its thing. But then I thought about my, you know, like card like Skull Clamp and just being able to just be able to slam equipments on anything I can on a dime since we're not running too many creatures. So I thought Vitugazi was a good choice when you pay, you know, Selesnya two colorless just to tap it at a 1-1 green sapling creature on the battlefield. Uh, now on to the fetch lands. We run Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expanse. And Naya Panorama. You guys know I love the Panorama cycle. Um, I should, I do have a one swept teeth in my modern deck. I'm probably going to end up putting it in here. But it's not in here right now. So we're just going to keep going. Alright, now on to the lands that tap for any color. We got Opal Palace. I think Opal Palace is really good for, you know, um, Voltron decks and everything. Even though Nizan's a little expensive at 6 mana. Uh, but every once in a while you'll be able to ramp hard enough to where Opal Palace can actually pump your dude up. Uh, next, Command Tower. Just amazing lands. Sun Petal Grove, uh, once again, just an amazing land. Uh, Temple Garden. We got Scattered Groves, Amonkhet, Cycle Land. Uh, then most of these are from the pre-con. We got Tranquil Expanse, Selesnya Guildgate, Elf, Elfheim Palace, Grey Pelt Refuge, gain some life. Blossoming Sands, gain some more life. Uh, Selesnium Sanctuary, Karoo Lands. 
stirring wildwood man land that came with the precon but pretty much all these lands right here except for like the first like couple uh in the dual section they were pretty much all um they're pretty much all from the precon which is pretty cool and salt cross is set i'm not sure how to think about the storage lands i don't usually play them but it was in the precon so i was like let's give it a try but yeah uh, next is on to our, you know, our, almost our basics, non-basic basics, I guess you can call. So we got secluded step for the cycle ants, and then I believe nine planes, and then a tranquil thicket for the green, green cycle ants, and then I believe four forest. Yeah. All right. Now on to our ramp package. Gotta run with soul ring. This is not a surprise. Burgeoning. Is absolutely an absurd card. I mean, late game it doesn't really do much, but early game it can, like, sometimes it can have class a soul ring in the, fir in the first turn, uh, depending. Um, Birds of Paradise, amazing card. And also, I want to win a game with a bird, Voltron, with just a bird all set up and, and decked out, wearing boots, with his armor on, doing work. Uh, next, Sakura Tri Belder. It's always important to ramp. Let's ramp with Sakura Tri Belder. Kadama's Reach. Uh, just, you know, staple ramps. Cultivate, staple ramp. Sword of the Animus, not staple ramp. Uh, well, it depends. I, I actually like Sword of the Animus in any card that's, I mean, in any deck that's not playing green. But, um, I really like it in this deck just because I can tutor for it on a dime. Like, if I'm having mana problems, I can, like, you know, I can design it in or something if I really need it. So, uh, I really like Sword of the Animus. Um, and if you guys don't know what it does, equip creature gets plus one, plus one, and then when it attacks, you may search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, attack. So it just keeps on rampant growth every time you attack with that creature. It's really good. Uh, Sky Shroud Claim is really good because it gets you two forests, and then you can put them into play on top, which also works with your dual lands. Uh, well, your dual lands, it says forests and planes, like your cycle land, and, you know, if you have the actual dual land, your dual land, and, uh, shock land, and all that stuff. Or keep going. All right, more ramp. Garrick Wildspear, amazing. Ramps, puts creatures out, overruns your creatures. It's everything you want in a ramp card. Options. Mirari's Wake, this came with the precon. Crazy good card. We needed this. We needed this free print. Uh, Mirari's Wake, because I haven't had this until I got the precon. I was, I was so excited. I was like, yeah, I want a Mirari's Wake, of course. So, you know, it's Selesnia, three colorless. Creature you control, get plus one, plus one. Sure, Voltron strategy would give it a little pump. And whenever you tap land for mana, add one mana that that land could uh, type that that land blah, 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 could produce. So yeah, it, it doubles the mana. Awesome. Uh, now into our card draw package, we run Skull Clamp. Skull Clamp isn't too amazing in this deck. It's unfortunate that there is um, I don't run too many one ones or one one producers besides the Vitugazi lands. Uh, but I mean the card's always been really good just to be like hey It's either you're taking a bunch of damage or you're gonna trade and you know, I'm gonna get two cards out of the, out of the trade so um, It's it seems pretty good Infiltrator lens. I actually like this a little bit better uh, Than than the skull clamp in this deck because you get in a weird spot sometimes in this deck I believe when you play Nizan go for uh, the hammer put the hammer on make it indestructible But it can just be chump block for days, so it's not getting damage uh, this gets you in a spot where if they do block it, just chump block it all day, I'll be drawing two cards all day. So uh, that's why I like Infiltration Lens. Oh, let's get this a little closer. Bloop. Okay, so next is Pure Still Paladin for the card draw. Two white for a human knight, 2-2. Two, two. Whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. Uh, equipment you control have equipment. If I have Metalcraft, which I have three or more uh, artifacts, I can actually, my equip cost is zero for all my uh, equipment. So yeah, this card is insanely good in this deck. Um, I really like this card, and um, I, th I just I think it's is it, it, I mean the zero cost is ridiculous. There's some things that cost so much in this uh, deck to equip, and just being able to have metal craft and just equip it for zero is sick. Uh, SRAM is our other way, except it's not like pure still because it's not an ETB effect; it's a cast effect. So whenever I cast an equipment. Um, it will trigger the draw card, but it's still really good. Next, key to the city. Uh, if you guys didn't notice, I'm a huge fan of the key to the city because it's just it it it's double duty. It you know I usually like playing things that that get really big and stupid and playing them quick and stuff. And being able to give them a block is good, and also card advantage is just really good. Card advantage wins games. Uh, that's why key to the city's in here because we want to win games. Next is crystal ball. Uh, crystal ball, you guys know I'm a huge fan. 
you know, pay one, scry two. Just you keep doing it over and over again. Really good. Next is Heir Heirloom Blade. This is another new one from the pre-con. Uh, it's three mana with one equip cost. Equip creature gets plus three, plus one. That's pretty boring. But whenever an equipped creature dies, you may reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card that shares a creature type with it. Put that card in into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. When I first saw this card, I actually I actually put this in today. I built this a couple days ago, like the first day it came out, I built this. Um, and, you know, I, I was thinking, you know, I, I don't know why I need this in this deck. I'm not running too many cats. Like, I run Nizan and I run a couple, like six other cats that are actually good. Uh, you know, backups for Voltron strategy, just in case they take care of my general somehow, and I like can't, you know, don't have enough to cast it, or somehow I'm dumb and don't put it in the right spot, or you know, something happens. Um, but the cool thing about this uh, card also is I found some cool little, uh, cool little lines I can play with it. Like, not only does Nizan get me another cat for backup if it dies with the Heirloom Blade on it, uh, but it can also get me Stoneforge Mystic, which is huge uh, because they are both artificers. Uh, another cool line that you can hit play uh, is that, you know, late game, uh, Sakura Tribe Elders, usually sometimes Sakura Tribe Elder is pretty weak late game play, uh, but it, you can play a Sakura Tribe Elder and put uh, Heirloom Blade on it and then sacrifice it to get a land and trigger it and actually get Eternal Witness out of the deal. You'll automatically get that. Uh, I have some other cool lines also with like, um, you know, Sun Titan getting, um, whatchamacallit, uh, stone hewer giant and I think I could do a vice versa you know stone hewer giant can get another kitty that we'll talk about later but yeah heirloom play, heirloom blazers it's card advantage it's like hey you killed my Voltron strat usually the original reason why I put it on here I put it on a kitty it's like you know that kitty dies and I go you know what? I'll get the other I'll most likely get the other kitty for my Voltron strategy so yeah I'm sorry it's been a while since I've made a video guys I wasted too much time on that card but it needed to happen. Next, Harmonize. Four mana, draw three cards. Great blue card. Uh, next, Staff of Nin. Uh, come on. Six mana, draw an extra card. Ping things. Staff of Nin is an amazing card. There's Eternal Witness. Uh, this is my regrowth package. We regrowth on a stick. Really good. Sun Titan. Six mana, six, six, Vigilance. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, I may return a permanent from my graveyard to the battlefield with convert mana cost three or less. Pretty good. Pretty good. Now to my removal section. Swords of Plowshares, just, you know, the best creature removals. And Path to Exile, best creature removals. Gotta have it because they're one drops and they kill and they exile. Uh, next is the, uh, it says it's more removal. Kosali Pride Mage. Uh, it's really cool. That it has Exalt it because it can actually work with my Voltron strategy because usually I'm getting it with one creature at a time, like putting all my eggs in that basket and just get, getting at it. Uh, but it's also cool that it can, um, it can naturalize on a stick. The Glamour. For ways of dealing with indestructible or problem things. They're gods that are enchantments. Uh, the Glamour is a sweet one. Beast Within. It's Beast Within. It destroys, destroys anything. It's great. Acidic Slime. Uh, another fun fact. Heirloom Blade. Can put this on Acidic Slime. If it blocks, it can die. And then it can get me... Um, the one ooze that gets rid of grave scavenging ooze. That's right, and they can do that vice versa. The scavenging ooze getting aesthetic slime. So yeah, destroy target artifact enchantment or land on ATB. Pretty good. Uh, next is our Ar Argentum armor. Six mana, six equip. Gets plus six plus six. Whenever equipped creature attacks, destroy target permanent. This this card is strong. And with the hammer out, you pay six and it goes straight onto the creature. It's absurd. It's good. It's awesome. It's in here. That's why. Uh, I didn't know where I put this in the in the removal section i don't know where to really put this but this is another new commander from the uh 2017 pre-con and it's mary weatherlake duelist selesny uh yeah selesny one colors for three two legendary cat warrior first striker and whenever um uh, whenever mary attacks each opponent can't block with more than one creature this combat and as long as mary weatherlake duelist is tapped um, no more than one creature can attack you each con. So even though it's not removal, it like helps bottlenecks. It helps control the situation. So that's why I have it in here because I think it's I think it's solid. It's also another it's also another fine Voltron target. And now we're going into the mass removal because when we get the hammer on the Zon, all we want to do is kill all the creatures and get him for commander damage and win. That's what it's kind of what we want to do. Uh, so we are going Dave Judgment just destroy all creatures. 
The Wrath of God to destroy all creatures can't be regenerated. Fumigate, destroy all key creatures, let's gain some life. Route, uh, this was also in the pre-con. Destroy all key creatures. Uh, you can pay two extra to cast it, to cast it as an instant. Uh, and, and, you know, they can't be regenerated pretty good. Uh, Phyrexian Rebirth, uh, six mana, destroy all creatures, then put an XX colorless horror artifact creature token on the battlefield where X number of creatures destroyed. I like this card because it works well with my Voltron strategy. I could have, like, a new creature to Voltron on. So that's why I really like this card. Uh, now into the remove everything. Our revelation is ridiculous. For the most part, it's three mana for, like, an Oblivion Stone-like effect. Destroy all non-land permanents. Insane. Or you could say it's like a Plenar Cleansing effect, except for three less. So we have Plenar Cleansing also for uh, our... It's an hour of Revelation for three more. Uh, that's what we're going to compare it to now. Uh, now to Graveyard Hate. We got Scavenging Ooze is amazing. Get rid of creature cards. Uh, you can get it big so you can Voltron it up. And you also gain life in the process, which is really good. Uh, Crooked Condemnation. Uh, this is a new card. New staple, by the way, guys. I picked. I just recently picked up a play set of these because they're really good. Um, I actually like it. In Commander, I like it better than Relic of Progenitus. Uh, no, you don't get to Cantrip, but it's better because the first ability, you can target the card. So you can actually, you don't have to exile all yards at a given moment. You can actually, you can still answer things without having to get rid of all yards. And that's why I really love this card, because it has options. Usually cards with options are good. Alright, these are my backup kitties. When Nizan is too expensive or disappears, these are the route we take. And one is Sunspear Shikari. Uh, it's it's a white and a colorless for a 2-2 two -two cat soldier. And as long as it is equipped, it has first strike and lifelink. Seems pretty good. Police mainline. Uh, Selesnia colors, 3-3. Three, three. Uh, and you can pay uh, Selesnia and 3 colorless to, to do monstrosity 1, which it gives a plus 1, plus 1 counter. But as long as it has, as long as it's monstrous, it has hexproof and indestructible. Once it gets monstrous, it's a fantastic target. Uh, to become a Voltron. Voltron strategy kitty cat. Next is Sky Hunter Skirmisher. I never knew that this was a kitty cat until, like, I think YouTube. Somebody said it on YouTube. And I was like, oh yeah, that is a cat. So we have it in here. It's flying double strike. It's got the best of both worlds. Uh, it can deal tons of damage in a spot, and it has full of pseudo evasion. Uh, so yeah, that's why we're running in here. Next is Kemba Ka Regent. It is... Uh, you know, two white and a colorless for a cat cleric, 2-4. Um, you guys should know Kemba. Kemba's usually with your cat go-to equipment Voltron deck. Uh, and, you know, it's really good because it counts the number of, you know, upkeep. It counts the numbers of equipment on it and then makes that many 2-2 two -two cat creatures. Um, so, yeah, we kept it in here also because I thought it would be good to go wide. Uh, there's also other cards that, you know, once I get a lot of equipment out, it could be huge. Uh, Balan, Balan Wandering Knight is another, is a new one. From the pre-con 2017 pre-con this card is insane uh it's three three cat knight for two white and two colorless first strike and then uh Balan has double strike as long as two or more equipments on it but the activated ability is the sickest part it's one white one colorless attach all equipments you control to Balan. so if like if the voltron isn't working on any other cats and you just have a bunch of equipments out there you can most of the time late game play it uh, just pay two and get everything on it, which is absurd. It could be absurd the things you can do with Balan. Uh, next is Roxasha Golden Cub. Um, it's two color, I mean, two white, five colors for a three four vigilance cat soldier. As long as Roxasha Cub is equipped, cat creatures you control get plus two plus two and double strike. That includes him. So yeah, he gets huge. Uh, I don't run too many cats, and usually I save them for if, you know, the other Voltron strategy doesn't work out. If they take out that creature, I play this creature, you know. I don't like to put all, you know, just throw everything out right away. I like to hold on to some things. Uh, so, yeah, it's really good, though, by itself. So that's why he's in here. Next is Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, this is my tutor section. And it's one white, one colorless. You know, when it enters the battlefield, search your library for equipment card, reveal it, put it into your hand. And you can pay a uh, white and a colorless, tap it, and you put equipment card on, from your hand onto the battlefield. Uh, you know, as soon as you cast this, the first thing you're going to probably want to grab is um, which one? Batter Skull, since it, you know, it's a living weapon. It just comes right out. And you get so much value in the early turns. Uh, next is Tajnar Swordsmith. Uh, one white, three colors, two, three. Uh, when you cast it, you can pay X if you do search your library for equipment cards. Uh, with converted mana costs equal to X or less. Uh, put that card onto the battlefield. More tutor. Stone Hero Giant. Uh, two white, three colorless for Vigilance 4-4 four, four Giant. 
uh, want pay white and a colorless tap and search your library for an equipment card and attach it to a creature you control. So yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, next is Sigarda's Aid. Uh, you may cast aura equipment spells as so though they have flash. This section, by the way, is for equipment matters cards. Uh, then whenever equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach it to target creature you control. So it's almost like it's the hammer-like effect on Sigarda's Aid. Uh, Leon and Shikari is one white, one colorless for a 2 team. You may activate equip abilities anytime you could cast an instant. So you can move things around when you need to. Uh, now on to my protecting my Voltron creatures. Uh, Lightning Greaves, you know, uh, two and zero. Equip, uh, equip creature has haste and shroud. Uh, just watch out when you do this because shroud keeps you from equipping other things on it. So make sure this is the last equipment you put on it. Um, the card's really good though. It's awesome. It got a reprint. It was in the pre-con. Really good. Another card in the pre-con. Hexproof haste. Two, one. Really good. Gotta have Voltron strategies. Whisper Silk Cloak, unfortunately, was not. It's three, two, equip. Uh, equip creature is unblockable and it has shroud. So once again, be careful with the whole shroud thing. But unblockability is huge in Voltron strategies. Uh, next for protection, this is uh, putting indestructible on it. Uh, the hammer does it, but also dark steel plate does it. And dark steel plate is also indestructible, which is huge. So sweet. Next into life gain spot Lux and Warhammer three three equip equip creature gets plus three plus eight trample on life like huge. It, that's so good. That's like the next thing next thing you probably usually want to put on after you put the hammer on is on. Uh, Behemoth Sludge is not as good. Uh, Slesnia 1, they get plus 2, plus 2, and have Life Link and Trample. Well, it does. Next, Batter Skull. Batter Skull is amazing. Plus 4, plus 4, Vigilance, Life Link. Living Weapon, 5, 5, Equip. And 3, Return Battle Skull to its owner's hand so you can protect it in a pinch if you got lands open. Uh, another new one from the pre-con. I, I really want to try this. I haven't played it yet. Blood Forge, Battle Axe, 1, 2 to equip. Equip creature gets plus 2, plus 0. Whenever a equip creature deals combat damage to a player, create a token that's a copy of Blood Forge, Battle Axe. This could get absurd late game. Especially with that 1k, like, late game, like, when everything's dead, you play it, and then you, like, attach all equipments on it. Like, what if you have 10 of these? This is huge. And other things. It's nuts. Uh, next is Sword of Vengeance, uh, 3 and 3 to equip. Crypt Creature gets plus 2 plus 0 and has First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. It's a lot of stuff. Seems good. Next is Fire Shrieker. We want to give him Double Strike. We want to deal a ton of damage. Uh, so yeah, it's 3, 2 to equip. Next, Kate is Spike, or quite a Spike, whatever. Uh, 3 mana, 3 equip. Equip Creature has Death Touch, but whenever Equip Creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses half of his or life to round it up. That hurts when that happens. <laughs> Don't get hit with Crate of Spike. Uh, then the last one is Sword of Feast and Fame. And I had I had to pick up a sword. I was like, if, if you, when I'm building a Voltron equipment, right? I was like, the only the biggest cards I need in it is a Feast and Famine and a um, the Batter Skull. So yeah, so I went with that. And you know, it's three to equip. It gets two plus uh, the creature gets plus two plus two and has protection from black and green. When a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card. And you may untap all your lands and just keep doing all kinds of shenanigans. So yeah, that is my deck, guys. Uh, you guys let me know what you think about it. Uh, it is 